is necessary, and how such change will impact their wealth. The first one, the first suggestion is to provide trainings, trainings to management, finance, and accounting personnel to let them have a better understanding of the requirements of the new gap. And revise the accounting policy, establish a detailed implementation guidance for complex accounting issues. To enhance the internal control system, to be to be in line with the in detailed internet, internal control guidelines just issued in April. To allocate internal resources, establish information systems and collect the re relevant information. To strengthen the communication discussions between business department and the finance department, such as the R&D, whether the R&D cost should be expensed or be capitalized, should, de mm, should, discuss, should depend on the discussions and management decisions based on the R&D department technic technicals. The, top, the second topic is accounting for business combinations and the common control and the group reorganizations. This topic is not covered in the IFR3, and in practice, acquisition method is allowed for com common control combinations with substance from the perspective of the, of the accounting entity, i.e. the acquirer. But under the new PRC gap, it is within its, in the scope of ASB20 business combinations, and the pooling of interest method is mandatory for all common control combinations. Although there is no need to determine fair value under the pooling of interest method, we all know that the accounting is based on the carry amount of the assets and the liabilities on the books of the acquiree. But restatement is required at the consolidation level for comparatives. And it may re result in significant reconciliations when preparing for income tax return. For example, if mm, the accounting for common control combinations is based on book value, original book value, but if from the tax perspective, the acquisition and the reorganization is taxable, then, then the tax base for the assets and the liabilities of the acquiree should be restated to the fair value. But the accounting is based on book value, so temporary difference may arise. So we may need to consider whether it is necessary to recognize deferred tax assets or deferred tax liabilities for such difference. Accounting for government grants and assistance. As just introduced by Charles, we know that in China, local governments offer, often offer favorable conditions, such as tax refunds, refunds of land use right cost, etc. However, due to legal constraints, such refunds are usually in the form of support and assistance funds, which is prescribed in the comp complementation agreement. The State Council, the central government of China, strictly prohibits the refunds of land use rights cost or refunds of tax, which is not authorized by tax law. But in order to attract foreign investments, many local governments offer favorable conditions to the foreign investors invest, investing in their area. Usually, they take this form. Firstly, they sign a formal agreement on land acquisition cost, say, um, say the cost of land is about 10,000 yuan. But the docu this document, this contract, is to be filed with the authorized the governments, uh, governmental authorities to get the land. 
such as mm, such uh, such as National Land and Resources Department. But at the same time, the government will issue another complementation agreement with the investor. See that we will refund you eight thousand yuan per square meters for the land you just acquired from the finance from the from our finance facilities. So the accounting issue is to how to account for the subsidy of eight thousand yuan per square meters obtained from the local government by the through the complementation agreement. Such accounting for such refunds should be based on the analysis of the substance of such refunds to determine whether it's related to assets or income. Usually, the refund of tax if from the substance, substance we regard it as a refund of land use right. It should be accounted for as uh, should be accounted for as ground related to assets. Then it should be recognized as deferred income and then amortized over the useful life of the land use right. Accounting for income tax, effect of tax uncertainties and tax benefits. As just discussed by the charts, we know that in China, due to complexities of tax taxation environment, tax uncertainties often, often arise due to the gray areas or due to the different local practices. Accounting for the effects of such uncertainties involving exercise, exercising of management judgment to make a best estimate of the amount that will be settled. In accordance with IS 38, 37 contingencies. For the tax benefits, the China tax law offers various types of tax benefits, such as tax reductions, or tax exemptions. For tax benefits, care should be exercised to determine whether enjoying tax benefits need, needs approval by taxation authorities beforehand. If yes, then the tax benefits cannot be accounted for until a formal approval is received. If no, tax benefits can be accounted for based on the management's best estimates as of the balance sheet date as to whether they can enjoy such tax beneficial per, uh, preferential treatment. And what is the amount of expected tax reduction or tax exemption? But if it involves complex judgments, tax ex seek tax experts' professional opinion is strongly encouraged. This is based just a general discussion. I need to say that this is only a general discussion. In practical cases, due to the complexity of background information, consult with tax experts and accounting experts may also be required. The next topic is accounting for termination benefits of employees under the new PRC employment contract law. The PRC Employment Contract Law become effective of January the 1st, 2008, which stipulates scenarios in which the termination benefits should be paid to employees upon termination of employment and established the formula on which the amount of such termination benefit is based. The accounting issue for FIEs are the accrual and expensing is it necessary to accrue such termination benefits during the terms of employment contract? We see that, in general, the accrual and expensing of termination benefits should follow the accounting standards on employee benefits, such as IS, IS 19 or ASB 9. The basic principle underlying the two standards are similar. After due consideration, we concluded that 